The flag's pretty good atmosphere, mate. Yeah, it's fantastic out here. 10,000 know, plus people. Um, obviously a beautiful Adelaide day and uh, to watch the boys sort of go through their final paces. And look, it's been a great atmosphere all week and uh, I think they'll now jump on a plane tomorrow afternoon and see what Melbourne's like. How are your nerves? Yeah, it's, uh, I've got a few uh, starting now, but to be honest, we've been too busy. So the, the week's been... It's, it's pretty good, isn't it? So, yeah, the week's been extraordinary, uh, just trying to deal with all the events that we've got on, but um, yeah, look, our fan base have just been fantastic throughout the course of the week. And, uh, the, the guys will go to, to Melbourne knowing that uh, they've got the support of the state behind them. Andrew, how does this training session at the MCG work? Is it, is it a lockout because of security reasons, or do you want it open? No, nah, look, it'll be a closed training session, and for, um, it'll be a closed training session for... Um, for both high performance and security reasons, just obviously we had the open session here today, but once we get to the MCG, it's it's you know business is on. How's the governor doing? Yeah, well, unfortunately, you know, Mitch needed to get through today's session, and uh, as Pikey said earlier, he didn't uh, quite pull up. So it's a sad story for Gov, but um, you know, one man down, another one up. Well, obviously, match committee will meet on Thursday. They'll make uh, their determination and. Look, it's, it's not just about Andy. There's a bunch of guys on the fringes, you know, who played well throughout the course of the year. So, uh, there's one game to go. It's going to be tough decisions for match committee. Is that a more reassuring session from Hugh Greenwood today? Uh, well, look, again, we'll let the coaches sort of assess that when they go back and, and look at it. But uh, I think he ran pretty freely from what I saw, and um, I'm sure he'll be available for selection on uh, on Thursday. How does this rank in your career um, over the years, this week and the build-up? Look, it's. Uh, right up there absolutely fantastic and obviously the scale of the AFL is you know is, is enormous and uh, and similarly the scale of the Adelaide Football Club and its fan base is extraordinary so you've got 600,000 fans who've uh, I feel like every one of them sent us a letter of support this week and uh, I think we'll have plenty you know there in full voice uh, at the MCG on Saturday afternoon and hopefully we can make them proud. Would you like to see this uh, football club has been through a pretty tough journey over the past couple of years have you as a club done anything to embrace the Walsh family going into the game on Saturday? Uh, well, look, we speak to, to Meredith often, and uh, including this week, and, uh, and you know, she knows that and she's an important part of this football club and, and she'll be supporting the boys on, on Saturday afternoon. I don't want to talk about how that will happen, but you know, she'll certainly be supporting the boys on Saturday afternoon. And you know, we, We've had a well-documented you know, journey over the last couple of years, and yeah, it's been hard, And but all clubs have their stories, and for Richmond, you know, have their stories to tell as well. And uh, look, at, all I will say is that uh, regardless of the result but particularly if we win it'll be a it'll be a really emotional day and um you know be a lot of people you know proud of the boys efforts throughout the course of the season hopefully especially on uh you know five six o'clock on saturday afternoon Andrew, it's new ground for focused when you've all this hype is happening are you wanting them to embrace it or to, to focus on what's happening yeah i think it's a it's a real balance isn't it about in, embracing the week and we've spoken about that and uh we've got you know, although we don't have grand final experience in the playing group we've got it amongst our coaches and and that's been one of the messages for the guys is to certainly embrace the week. It's not a normal week. We don't normally train in front of 10,000 people, but uh, uh, but equally you've got to try and stick, stick to your, your normal structures in terms of your your, your actually your personal preparation. And uh, I'm I'm really confident that we've got the balance right, and the guys will be ready to go on the weekend. Is about getting stage fright with the G? No, look, I think our, our record's been pretty good at the G over the last couple of seasons, so mate, the guys will be ready to go. And uh, I know that Eddie's referred to it uh, before to me as his playground, so. Uh, look, there's, uh, as I said, it's been a, a good, a good performance over the last couple of years, and they'll be ready to go. Andrew, when it's new ground for everyone in your team, what's the best way to try to deal with the unexpected for them? Uh, on Saturday, yeah. Well, I, I, look, we we talk about um, expect the unexpected, and I think that's probably the best way that the coaches every week go through their what ifs and um, prepare for you know the eventuality either on our side or, or what the opposition brings, and that'll be no different. Uh, this week we'll go through that as we otherwise would. Uh, the players you know, know about that as well and you know, I feel really confident that regardless you know, what comes at them or what happens during the course of the game that you know, they'll be, it'll, be, it'll be nothing that they won't have prepared for. Were you surprised by the fuss on the jumpers? Uh, probably not surprised given the, uh, we're playing a very large you know, Victorian football club but I thought it was reasonably straightforward uh, as the highest place, placed uh, qualifier that uh, there shouldn't be a question over whether we should wear our home strip. I think the question is just really, is there a clash? Uh, if there's not a clash, I've got no problems with Richmond wearing theirs. If the AFL and the broadcasters deem that there is a clash, then uh, then they need to make alternative arrangements. So what have you done? There was a debate a couple of years ago about who comes out first, who's named first on the scoreboard in an upset 
West Coast against Hawthorne. Have you gone down that path as well? Uh, we've certainly got our, our preparation sorted in terms of uh, when we're running out in the ground, and we're really comfortable about that. Uh, so you're it, first or second? So look, we'll be we'll be second. Uh, and look, as it as the rest of those things go, look, we're not fussed about it, and we don't really care who's listed um, top or bottom of the scoreboard. It's about what happens on the field. And there's been a lot of debate about tickets and the allocations. Would you like to, in, you know, going forward, if we were to, you know, there was to be more crows in finals going in, in the coming years, would you like to see more allocations to the competing teams? Well, the short answer to that is yes. Um, the longer answer is that's pretty difficult. And uh, look, all teams get allocated the same number, and you know, we've got a fan base of 600,000. We've got you know close to 80,000 members. Uh, there are never going to be enough tickets, and particularly when you fill this place out. Uh, you know, with 50,000 people every week. So, unfortunately, it's a, it's one of the world's greatest sporting events. Uh, the tickets are at a premium. Uh, demand exceeds supply. And, uh, you know, we'll always campaign for more tickets, as I think all other 17 clubs, you know, will do as well. Uh, you know, I feel sorry for the people who missed out. Obviously, those that have got there will, will be part of a really special experience. Has it been handled well? Do you think there's a review that needs to occur? Look, I think this is a conversation that takes place every September. Um, it's always full on grand final day, so... I'm sure the AFL will continue to review it, but said it, it's hard. And for us, it's about, it's not just about the Saturday afternoon there, it's obviously about the week. We'll, be, we'll have a live site operating here at, uh, um, at Adelaide Oval from 12 noon uh, out in Telstra Plaza. So I think that'll be a pretty special experience for those who can't get across to the game. Uh, obviously, in the event we were able to get up, there'll be the team will be presented to the, to, uh, to the, uh, the Adelaide Crows fans who um, actually make it to the MCG post-match. And, and then on Sunday morning in Melbourne, we'll have an event for the fans as well before the guys jump on a plane and come back home. You're still surprised there's so much questioning of what you do in the national anthem? Uh, look, I just think there's a thirst for content when it comes to the AFL, and it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, we're, you know, we want to prepare for the game to be ready uh, and ready and focused. And we've worked out something that has done that for us over the last couple of weeks. It's unusual to stand there for a national anthem. It's a, it's, it's not a normal preparation and. And so you've got to you know, come up with something that you think is going to have you best prepared. And the guys have got that at the moment. And uh, what others say about it is really up to them. If you didn't have to face the opposition we did like international sports where you all lined up looking at a national flag, would it make any difference to the players? Yeah, it's hard to deal in hypotheticals, mate. We, no, but we it's, don't, it's a simple it's, question. If you yeah. change the routine to line up well, we just, like international teams, yeah. would it change I can honestly what say it's, I can honestly say that we haven't thought about it because we know we're facing the opposition. So they know they're going to be staring at them. That's... Uh, you know, that's just the way, it's the way the structure works. So if they were to suggest it was going to change, well, then we'd address whether we do that or not. It's been reported the... that the club's already met with Melbourne to discuss Jake Flavor. Is that the case? Uh, mate, again, I think I've been pretty consistent right throughout the course of the season, not talking about uh, player contracting, and I'm hardly going to change that position in grand final week. Speaking of the thirst for content, Phil's just announced six more teams for AFLW over the course of the coming years, two in 2019 and four in 2020. As the reigning premiers, are you concerned about the depth of talent? Uh, look, I think our message you know, throughout has been hasten slowly um, when it comes to expansion. I think it's really important that we keep the quality of the competition at a high level. Uh, I think that uh, obviously next year there won't be any expansion. And, you know, for 2018, uh, there are only two additional teams in 2019 and then four more coming in in 2020. So I'm quite comfortable that that steady growth is, is right. And, um, and, you know, it was obviously a, a wonderful inaugural season uh, but you know, we've always got to make sure that we've got you know, those underpinning structures starting to you know, flow through with great talent. And we've seen the expansion of the game in, in pretty massive numbers over the last 12 months. So I think as that sort of moves its way forward over the next three years, I, I'm pretty confident there'll be sufficient talent coming Andrew, out. Andrew, Andrew there'll be no debate now. You'll renew or extend Don Pike's contract pretty quickly after the grand final with them? Yeah, again, I think, I think we're pretty consistent on that. We wanted to sit down post-season, uh, but it's, I don't think there's any question about how... You know, um, uh, how happy we are, we are with Don's performance, and uh, he's a, he's been a um, obviously an integral part of the success of the of the team over the last two seasons, and you know I expect that that will continue for some time yet. What do you think Phil would make of all of this? Uh, look, I think he'd be tremendously proud. Uh, he was he was proud of the the footy club in the time that he spent with us, and uh, he was he was driven to achieve success and. Uh, said I, I think he'd be looking down tremendously proud of uh, what the boys have achieved so far but I also know that uh, he'd be absolutely focused on getting the job done uh, come Saturday afternoon and it's not about just getting there it's about uh, taking that next step and that's what our focus is.